Hi, I'm Libby Gustin, and welcome to my kitchen. My friend Mia's here, and we're learning how to set up a sustainable kitchen. So that means what we prepare, how we prepare it, it's gonna be better for us. It's gonna be better for the environment. You know, one of the things that I really like to pay attention to is the meat. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're buying meat, it's important how that animal was raised. Right. It's important what they ate, if they were out in the sun. Because you eat that. Because so. you eat yeah. that. And then they will have the full nutrient profile mm -hmm. that we're looking for. So it's gonna be better for us. And you know, the best part is, it's gonna taste better. Right. You don't have to do very much when I'm making something. Uh, but how do you know that? How do you know you how the animal is raised? The source, right? Yeah, so I like to either get it from the farmer directly or from my butcher Jason at Lazy Acres. So when I'm going to buy red meat, there's a lot of different labels here. And what's the difference between grass-fed, organic, and conventional? Conventional, all animals are raised uh, with all cattle are raised with their mothers for the first six months. Huh? six to 12 months, and then uh, the conventional, which is corn and soy animals are raising corn and soy, they are then put into a feedlot where they get their corn and soy. Um, Grass-fed animals are raised with their mothers for their first six to 12 months, but they stay on grass for their entire life. They're never confined at all. They're able to forage uh, for the 18 months that, that they're alive. Uh, the organics, there's no, there is no herbicides or pesticides involved with the corn or soy that these animals are, are fed. So they're organics fed, but it's it's not GMOs, it's not pesticides. Organic. Grass fed, they're eating what they normally would eat in nature. They would normally grass. eat in nature, yes. Okay. Um, but it doesn't mean that they have not been sprayed with a pesticide or an herbicide. Organics, on the other hand, okay. cannot have any chemical fertilizers, uh, herbicides or pesticides involved at all. So organic grass fed is organic the best thing the that best, I'd be looking for. Is the highest okay. value you can get. Yeah. When I buy meat here, how long is it going to last in the refrigerator before I have to cook it? You should use it within two days. If you're not going to use it today or tomorrow, freeze today. Okay. So anything that's fresh, I can freeze right away if I'm not going to use it really within one to two days. Absolutely. For the it's the freshest. It's okay. fresh. Freeze fresh. All right. So notice you have a lot of different ground meats in here. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between me buying the ground meat here and a packaged ground meat? Here it's ground fresh two to three times a day. Two or three times a day. Two or three times a day. Uh, if you buy it from somewhere else, you're okay. going to probably get a package that's in a modified environment. It's it's sealed. It's meant to last three, four to seven days, but it's not as fresh as can be as if you got it ground within several hours. Okay, so what um, what parts of the animal are you grinding? We grind the chucks for 22. They have a higher fat content. Then the rounds for 15% fat, okay. and then sirloins for, for ground sirloin, which okay. is 7% or less fat. Okay, so the part has to do with the fat content. Absolutely. Really. Tell me what sustainably sourced seafood is. Sustainably sourced seafood, marine or freshwater, are species that have been harvested um, that doesn't, doesn't harm the future stocks of the species. So it's good for us now, but also has to be good for us for the future to be sustainable. And that's important, because that means we can continue eating that fish in the future. Absolutely. And it takes care of the environment, it takes care of us as well. Absolutely. Okay. Um, why does your fish taste so fresh? Uh, for the most part, most of it's not frozen. Some of the aquaculture species we might have frozen, but for the most part we buy in season, it's always going to be fresh. Okay, that matters because I can that taste matters. such a difference. Absolutely. Um, so if I buy the fish today, how long before I need to cook it? You definitely have to cook it by, by today or tomorrow, okay. or freeze today if you can't use it today okay. or tomorrow. And I can freeze it because it was fresh. You can freeze it because it's fresh. Fantastic, thank you. So as you can see, I learned a lot from Jason about what quality meat mm -hmm. is. So we're gonna take some of the bison I got from him and make taco salad. So why bison? Because it looks like beef. It you does look like beef. And you know, actually, I often will substitute a dish that has beef in it, like taco salads, with bison. So you can really why? substitute it with anything. Bison is more lean. Um, it is something that's newer to our food system, so it hasn't been altered as much. Okay. So I feel like I'm getting cleaner meat, and I really like the flavor. So to cook it, I mean, you're going to cook it similar to beef, except, you know how when you make taco salad, you always have to drain your meat mm -hmm. to get the fat out? You don't have to drain it. It makes it one less step of work. 
So I'm just going to turn on the heat to about uh, medium high, and we're going to saute it just to get it brown. Just starting to brown. And you see a little bit of the, a little bit of the juice, a little bit, very little bit of fat, which is perfect because now I can add the onions in and they won't stick to the pan. So the goal here is I'm just making sure it's all browned, and then I'm going to add the taco seasoning in. And so while that's browning, I'm going to go ahead and finish the sauce for the taco seasoning. And what I like to do is I usually take a half a cup of tomato paste okay. and then fill the uh, jar up to one and a half cup line so you kind of make it a little looser. And then I'm going to add taco seasoning. You can make your own or they have some nice they blends that are already made and it's a lot easier <laughs> that way. But it's just a few simple ingredients and then I usually do three tablespoons to the one and a half cup of diluted tomato paste. So you don't put the seasoning right on top, you put it in the I put paste. it in Is the... Is that better? Because it's like a, a liquid that cooks into the meat, so the flavor's going to go in deeper if you do it that way oh, instead of just kind of coating the outside. I just usually sprinkle it right on yeah, top. Yeah, and you can do that, but this way it, it, the flavor will get deeper into the meat. So this is my preferred method, and just mix it in really well. Okay, so now the meat's browned. We're going to add the tomato mixture with the taco seasoning, um, and then we're going to simmer that for about 20 minutes. 10 to 20 minutes depends on how long, how fast your stove cooks, mm -hmm. but you're just trying to cook the juices down so that it's just a nice thick coating on the meat. Okay, perfect. Now we're just going to let that cook, set it aside, and we're going to make a nice taco shell to put all of this in so we have a delicious taco salad. So. You don't have to use these bowls. You can just use a bowl yes. that's oven proof at home. But these make it nice and easy, so mm -hmm. they're my preference. Um, I just put a little bit of ghee in the pan. You don't even have to do that, but I like it to get the shell a little crisper. So mm -hmm. by putting a little fat in there, it'll help do and that. What kind of tortilla is that? It's, good. it's a sprouted whole whole grain and then sprouted because one of the things with grains, we want to make sure there's no phytic acid. And so one of the ways that can be done is by sprouting it. So that way I know these are going to help me absorb more of the nutrients. And that's it. Now while that's simmering, we're going to put this in the oven. We're going to cook it for about 10 minutes, turn the oven up to brown it for another 10 minutes. Okay, and then you just... And they'll both be ready at the there. same time. I also got some shrimp at Lazy Acres today so that we can make a coconut shrimp curry to go amazing. with the... Could, have you ever used kefir, lime, or fresh garlic? Never. I got those at the farmer's market this week and all I could think about was coconut curry. So oh my gosh, let's do that. Yeah. So with this fresh garlic that I got at the farmer's market and the kefir lime, I'm going to make the coconut curry with some fresh coconut. Awesome. The garlic looks completely different from the garlic I usually get from the stores. It's so much easier to work with too, you'll see. What I usually do is take the coconut once it's opened and you're just going to scoop the meat out. And then this is the juice from the inside of the coconut. That's the so best I'm part. I'm going to put that in as well. So good. And what I'm looking for is that it's completely emulsified when I blend it. So that takes okay. a little bit of time. Mm. So it's pretty well blended. So now I'm going to add the lime juice. So this is the simplest way to introduce your lime. And because it's lime, it has no seeds. I just squeeze it right in. Again, less tools to use, less work. And I usually do a half a lime in here, and then I'm gonna save the other half, and I'm gonna put it on the shrimp right before we put it in. And the is curry. this like, is this coconut milk that you're making? It's coconut milks for the coconut milk curry. Okay. All right, that's ready. So now we need oh, to just get our easy, garlic huh? ready, and we can move over to the oh. stove and start cooking. So with fresh garlic, the first day you buy it, this stuff's really tender. So I got it on Sunday. So I'm probably going to take that layer off and this too, but usually the little cloves you see. Uh, and so, do you use and the stems? Use too. You can use that if oh. you cut it up really thin because it's, um, it's not chewy or anything and it adds a garlic flavor. If I'm making stock, it's great. I'll just cut that aside oh, yeah. and put it in stock. But I usually will cut the end off because it's still the kind of harder part where it's right. growing in the ground. But once you do that, all you have to do is slice it. Yeah. Okay, so we're ready to go to the stove and finish the curry. Awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is, you see how thick that is? It's so a little good. bit thick for what I want as a, a oh, soup. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to like get it to the consistency I want it to be. And that differs, you know, I can't if you say. Like it like that, yeah, it's usually you know. any different where from a half a cup to a cup and a half. And I usually pour the water in here so I get all the- You can get the rest. Yes. I was gonna I don't ask wanna waste like, any oh, of that, it. it's so good. <laughs> so just add a little bit in and just start stirring it. All right, perfect. That's the consistency I'm looking for. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is add the curry mixture. You can make your own, but if you're not familiar with curry, there's some really nice Spire blends out there to buy. And again, I'm gonna slowly add that in so it really mixes in. Okay, well this one looks good. We've got a good nice color. So we're ready to add the ingredients and I'm gonna add them how long it takes to cook. Okay. So like potatoes I'm gonna put in there, they take long, the mm -hmm. longest to cook. So that's the first thing I'm gonna put in as far as my ingredients. We'll just go ahead and add those because they're going to take about 10 minutes. And you so. don't cut them, you just... I don't cut them because I don't want the starchiness to get into the curry. And so with the skin on it, I get the flavor of the potato when I eat the curry, but it doesn't change the texture. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add that fresh garlic. And then we're going to add the kefir lime leaves. And that's going to give it kind of a, a fragrant floral lime flavor. It's a very unique flavor that you can only get by adding these. So when I saw them at the farmer's market, I was very excited. And are they just lime leaves of lime? From <laughs> kefir. It's a special kind of lime. So it's very interesting. The kefir lime itself is not very pleasant to eat. But the, <laughs> but leaves, the leaves are fantastic for cooking with. They oh, make okay. a great flavor. So they're more decorative in the fruit. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the basil. I'm going to save some of the basil to add as the finishing touch, but I want to get a little of that flavor cooked in there. And we'll go ahead and put the jalapenos. And again, I'm going to put about half of those. I like to sprinkle some on top to add a little crunch to it at the end, so we'll save some of those. And then if you'll hand me the carrots, we'll go ahead and put those in. They add a little sweetness while they're cooking, so I don't wait to put them in at the end. Put all that in. And then the mushrooms, because I also will take some and top it, but I like to put some in because it gives a depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives an umami, deeper flavor that you get with mushrooms. So you want them to cook in there for long enough to give that flavor. All right, so now all of this is in here. We're going to let it cook about mm, maybe 10, 15 minutes, just so your potatoes are almost done, mm -hmm. because the last ingredients we put in don't take very long. Mm -hmm. So I'm usually, I'll just cover it, and we'll let it simmer for a little bit. Oh, perfect. It's almost ready for the last ingredient. So if you'll squeeze the lime on the shrimp, that'll help. Mm -hmm. Right before we put it in, I'm just going to get that flavor really nice into the shrimp. It'll cook it just a little bit. So we're only going to leave it on for a couple of minutes. If you do it too soon, it'll actually cook your shrimp. So I'm going to go ahead and add the broccoli and the beans. They only take a couple of minutes to cook, and then the shrimp will be the last thing we add. All right, we're ready for the shrimp. And how do you know when the shrimp is ready? Is it when it turns that pink exactly. color? Exactly. It turns that pink color and you know it's done. And it usually takes two or three minutes. You don't want to overcook your shrimp because mm -hmm. then it becomes tough and chewy. So we're going to just cover that up and we'll come back in a couple of minutes and it'll be ready. As you can see, we made a really delicious coconut curry. It looks amazing. And you know, one of the great things is I got the shrimp because it was the seafood that was on sale. Mm -hmm. I could have also done it with a white fish. You can also do it with a chicken. Mm -hmm. So it's a very versatile dish. And then the vegetables, you can use whatever's in season. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the key is that kefir lime or even lemongrass, just something to give it that flavor that, that makes yeah. the curry. <laughs> also, if I have more people than I anticipated or I am in a lower budget this week, I can also add a whole grain to it. Okay. Um, and that's gonna give you a different yeah, profile of libraries. nutrients. <laughs> it makes it go further. Yeah. yeah. This is a sprouted, um, short grain sprouted uh, brown rice, so it sprouted, so okay. I didn't have to worry about soaking it. Because right. at the okay. last minute, I decided I wanted some rice with the mm -hmm. dish. And then here we have the oh taco salad. It is so cold. And so we have, what I did is I put some uh, shredded kale in the bottom. Okay. So that way I get a little bit more nutrients, and then I put the bison on top of the kale. So I didn't cook it, but the bison's going to kind of slightly cook it for me. Oh, okay. And I sprinkled a little bit of grass-fed cheddar cheese. And then I topped it with some shredded red leaf lettuce. And as you can see the colors here, we yeah. have some red peppers, we have some chives, and we have some cilantro. Oh. And of course this you could also add a whole Same. grain to yeah. and expand mm -hmm. it. So it's really easy to work with sustainable meats. They're really more affordable than we realize because they give us a lot more nutrients and they can go a long way.